What's up, everybody? Eric here with driverlineup.com, world's a K steering wheel holder. As you can see, the channel is back to driver lineup. Let's see if I can get this damn thing to sit here. Per the usual, this weekend, my uh, phone slash camera is not properly mounted and secured. Because I don't have much shit in this truck. I've been sitting in a brand new truck. <clears throat> There's very little in here. Uh, so I so I told you guys I'm gonna try to try to stay focused. Stay focused, Eric. Stay focused. I've had two cups of coffee, so I'm gonna try to stay focused on this. I want to do the video that I filmed last night, 20 minutes in this truck, but the APU wouldn't shut off, and it was I had to completely throw it away. It's too damn loud. <clears throat> so you couldn't feel, hear any audio, but I wanted to talk about uh, building a fleet with Prime Inc. And, um, you know, there's always going to be a lot of comments from people who don't have a fleet with Prime Inc., uh, aka have zero idea what the hell they're talking about that are going to come shit on these kinds of videos and say, well, you're stupid, you're dumb for running freight for Prime. You got to move on, do other things, go go elsewhere. That's not for me. Running a fleet with Prime Inc. is for me. Uh, I don't really drive OTR full-time now. <clears throat> um, in fact, I rarely run loads. I'm running one tonight, but uh, then I won't run one for another month probably. Uh so, you know, I, I just lost my train of thought there. But uh, in running a fleet with Prime, it it's the same with if I were still driving for Prime. Like full-time OTR, running my own truck. Uh, the advantages to me for being with Prime is and always have been. And there's the reasons that I came, one of the re big reasons that I came for, to Prime was job security or insulation from economic downturns. Okay, and what I mean by that, and right now is a perfect example of that. Perfect example. Because if you guys saw, did you guys see the, how, hard targets share share price or stock price has absolutely tanked and they literally said like look this up look this up go research this look at target i think they lost like 80 percent or not lost they their profits their profit margins dropped 80 percent year over year for the second quarter 80 percent uh, their profit was like one point something billion last year. Uh, and then it's like a couple hundred million this year. So, I mean, they're still making money, but 80% drop in their quarterly profit for Q2. And if you look at uh, their report on this, they basically flat out said consumers are not buying anything but food. Like that's, that's basically what it said. Not buying TVs, not buying a lot of uh, clothes, fashion, um, you know, all the stuff that's not food in targets. Like consumers are basically spending their money on food. <clears throat> Inflation's out of control. Look, I'm not saying this is not a biased thing with me saying it. So don't be like, hey, oh, you're just making shit up and or you got an ax to grind on the current administration. I do. I think the current administration is about effective as a lead balloon in properly representing us or managing anything. Uh, you know, that's a whole other story, but this is target, okay? Why do I bring this up? This is about fleets. Well, when I came to Prime, one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to be with Prime is for insulation against economic downturns. Prime is the largest refrigerated fleet carrier in the country not the largest carrier but the largest refrigerated carrier uh and you know we have flatbed and tanker uh but the our refrigerated division is the largest refrigerated fleet in the country 
<clears throat> and in addition to that, those contracts are in many ways, in many cases, decades old. So a lot of our uh, meat contracts and even big customers like uh, General Mills and things like that are uh, long, long time, long old school relationships. They are very uh, mutually happy relationships. In other words, the customers are very happy with Prime uh, as a carrier servicing their freight and Prime is very happy with them being customers that we can haul their freight. It, they're great relationships. That's why, that's probably one of the biggest reasons, if not the biggest reason that I chose Prime. Uh, training and equipment facilities, those all play a role, but uh, for me, I didn't want to get into a situation where the economy could go, go down a shitter and then was I going to be left at a truck stop with nowhere to go? You know, I wanted the most secure freight contracts. I wanted to be able to be 100% confident that no matter what happened, and no matter what happens in this country or in this world, what my trucks or truck is pulling is necessary. Um, and that is exactly what's happening right now. Uh, what Prime hauls primarily is the only thing that almost every consumer can buy. Um, so, you know, that's one of the biggest reasons that if I was running solo on my own truck or run a team in my own truck without additional trucks, that I continue running freight for Prime. That's why I will continue running a fleet, private fleet with Prime. I have zero intentions of taking a truck or trucks to run freight outside of Prime. I don't want to go to the spot market. I don't want to go to another carrier. Like I'm very, very happy with the Prime situation. Now, could rates drop and do rates drop? Yes. Are there better rates out there? Yes. Uh, can There are times when the spot market or going to another carrier where you have more independence, more load choice, uh, more load board options, you're going to get much better rates. But in the few years that I've been driving, I've also seen that side of the industry see a lot more pain where our rates, even though they don't increase as much, they remain more stable because we have contracts. Um, so, because, but those contracts sometimes benefit the customer. So we can't increase the rates substantially. And sometimes they benefit prime because the customer can't pay us super less, you know? So it's really important for me to continue maintaining that security, that insulation from economic downturns. That's why I will, I, I am building my fleet with under prime's authority running prime freight and that's why I will continue to build a fleet uh, running prime freight with no end in sight like I, I would be very happy to do this for 10 or 15 20 years however you know like I'm there's no plan whatsoever to stop running prime freight anytime soon <clears throat> and I see comments of well you know you're just trying to get by and uh blah 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 look I'm I will order a truck the second that I can, another truck. Um, and, you know, the, in fact, yesterday when I was talking with Haley Success Leasing, uh, I, I told her, I was like, hey, you know, what do I gotta do? How do I, how do I grease the wheels or who do I need to buy an expensive bottle of liquor to <laughs> be able to sneak in a truck order early? Like that's how, uh, ambitious I am and how much I want to order another truck. So, you know, I have no, no plans of slowing down. So in, so that's, so I, I want you to, the reason I'm saying all that is I want you to know why. And also that, uh, I, there's zero intentions of like, I, I it's totally worth it to me. I've been running a prime of a small fleet for enough time now to where I have a really good sense of kind of the averages. Now I'm not going to talk about numbers. I want to, believe me, I do, but 
I just want my drivers to have some privacy and I don't want it to be known um, what they're paid. They're not on YouTube. Uh, in fact, the driver of my Peterbilt, he wouldn't even let me interview him. Like he doesn't want to be on YouTube at all. Totally fine, understandable. But uh, they don't want their business you know, out there. And, and so if I break down numbers for you, you're gonna know what those tr uh, trucks are generating and what the profit margins are. And you can pretty much figure out what they're paid. And I, that's just not, I'm not down for that. <clears throat> uh, but I will tell you that there's two sweet spots that I'm pretty confident in based on my conversations with other fleet owners and I, and I know fleet owners that have like 30, 30 plus trucks. There actually is quite a few of them. Uh, you, I think a lot of times you wouldn't think that there's that many private fleet owners. There's a lot of private, there's way more than I thought there was, there would be. Um, and Jenna's got some good friends that she's communicating with often that have private fleets much bigger than us. And in a lot of these conversations, it's really come down to um, two numbers based on the math that I see and based on the information that's coming to me from those with much bigger fleets. And the two numbers are three and five. Uh, three trucks and five trucks. That's Those are two major milestones. And... The first one, three, is probably the hardest to get to. Uh, and I mentioned it in a video the other day. I said, you know, I, I don't remember what book I was reading, uh, but I was reading a, or actually listening to a book where someone who was talking about how the, you know, they're, they're very rich. They were talking about how the first million dollars was the hardest. And after that million dollars, the money started working for them. You know, like the money itself started to profit for itself but the first million was the hardest um, and the way that I've really kind of broken this down and looked at building a fleet is that the first two are the hardest like to, to, in a comparison or kind of a metaphor however you want to look at it two is the first million dollars because uh, two is two is a big challenge when you have two trucks and neither of them are paid for, it doesn't take a lot for one truck to really cause a lot of pain for the other truck. And to my drivers out there, I've talked to you, you know, I just wanna make sure my drivers know because I know they watch these videos. If your shit breaks down, it is has nothing to do with you. <laughs> so, I, like one of my driver was telling me yesterday, he's like, I feel really bad about this. And I'm like, bro, I feel really bad about this. The truck ain't moving. You're not making any money either, you know? So, you know, it, like he's, he kind of got into a hole too. And I was able to compensate him for downtime and pay for hotel bills and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, it, I was able to minimize the damage for him. But I, I don't want my drivers, if you're watching this video, it's not like, please don't take this the wrong way. There's shit outside of your control. I just need to con convey this to our subscribers. If one truck is not moving for a week, it causes absolute chaos uh, because it is so, because it's, you know, you're talking about with insurance and uh, just all the this is and that's that come into a truck payment, it's 50, you're $1,500 down uh, for that, for that truck not moving. And if you don't know this prime does, even though drivers for a private fleet are prime employees, prime doesn't pay for shit, like nothing. Prime is very genius in this. Like for example, prime will go and say, uh, you know, company drivers don't, don't pay anything for the wellness program. We're very happy and very pleased to offer this. Well, okay, yeah, company drivers don't pay for the wellness program, but in for drivers of private fleets, neither does Prime. <laughs> and there's no choice in that. Like the, the truck owner, 
the fleet owner is paying that driver's wellness. I am paying my drivers FICA, uh, their employment self, their employment taxes. I'm paying their workman's comp. I'm paying the insurance subsidy, uh, all that cost. So basically what they get paid uh, on their miles, basically I add like 50 or 60%. That's their actual cost. And this is not a complaint. Don't take this the wrong way. I'm just telling you the costs are pretty substantial. Okay, so it's not, you can't sit there and say, well, if a driver runs uh, 2,500 miles and they're paid X, then that driver is going to cost Y because that's not accurate. It actually is going to be 50 or 60. Well, I mean, the more miles they are, the less percentage that the additional costs are going to be. But the costs are substantial, much more than the miles, because Prime doesn't pay for anything, none of that, not their vacation matching, none of that. The the lease or the uh, fleet owner pays all of it. Um, so, and that's fine. I'm fine with that. I, I, again, this is not a complaint. This is just, I'm just being real with you. Um, so... If you're thinking that if you have two or three trucks, you're going to be baller town, that is not the case. When I set out to start a fleet, my whole objective was to try and break even um, at worst case scenario because the truck's being paid for. If the trucks, if my trucks are being paid for, I'm, ex I'm happy. I don't, I didn't like have expectations of making a lot of money like my expectations that the truck trucks would were being paid for uh that is my objective and that would work really well for those who uh, are still driving a truck so i don't drive a truck but it's fine i've got other things going on um and you know my trucking business generates revenue in a lot of ways but if, uh, if you drove a truck, then you would have the income from that truck you're driving. I don't, so it's a little different for me, but like Junior Honduras, I don't know anything about his financial situation. I've never asked him, it's his business, but he owns one or two or a couple of his trucks and he drives one. So he has that income too, right? So it's probably a little bit more profitable, plus he's got a bigger fleet. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But if you're at two or three trucks, like you cannot, don't think that a truck is, that you have a driver in is going to be making you one, a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a week. It's not going to happen. That is not the reality. Um, and, you know, and even if they train, which some private fleets don't want their drivers training, I don't care. If my drivers want to train, they can train. Um, the truck is insured, you know. It, does it make me nervous? No, it doesn't. It's just like, that's part of the game. People have to be trained. And if my drivers want to make more money by training, they can. I, I don't even, it's not even a, an afterthought for me. Um, but the truck is, as a solo truck, it's just not making you as much money as people think. In fact, my company drivers make just about the same on average when they're really running well, they make about the same that I made uh, on average when I was solo lease. Um, and they have benefits. They have health insurance and all that good stuff. So when you include the health insurance and all that, they make about the same. It comes out to pretty close to the same that I made on average. Okay, Bad weeks and good weeks on lease. They make about the same. So if you take that into consideration, like, you know, trucks in a fleet are not making you a ton of money. So then why do it? Well, it's the long game because when the, when the truck is paid off, you now have an additional almost $5,000 a month in net gain because you don't have a truck payment, right? So it's the long, like that's substantial. That's the long game or you can sell it. My plan is probably to run the truck for an additional six months to a year and then sell it. So run it for six months to a year, 
uh, with no payments and then sell it. So that's, that's kind of the cycle that I'm working towards creating. So it's a long game. It can, can and will become very lucrative and very profitable, but it is not the way you would think in the trajectory, the journey to get to that point. Now, getting back to the three and the five thing, well, again, the two trucks, one truck can very easily drag the other truck down. And it's painful too when you're driving and there's another truck running. If that other truck is down and it goes into the hole, it doesn't just go into the hole. That money comes from your truck that you're driving. So you can have a great week and you could be like, oh, hell yeah, I'm gonna get a $2,500 check this week. It's gonna be amazing. But the other truck's been broken down. <laughs> so the money's gonna come out of the settlement for your truck to pay for the loss on the other truck. Plus you have to pay the driver's downtime and you have to pay the driver's hotels, right? So you, your whole profit for the truck that you're running just got eaten up by the other truck. And at two trucks, there's no third truck to try and make up any, you know, try to make up any any losses there. So that's why to me, the jumping from two trucks to three trucks is that first million. It's really, really difficult. Um, based on what I'm what my math and what I funnel into the e-funds and the little bit that the trucks tend to make on average which I do share that with the drivers. Um, I give them a bonus uh, every once in a while. Like I try to do it every other month, like a nice chunk to them um, if the trucks have been profitable because I want them to be happy and I want them to feel like they've got some skin in the game and I want them to be motivated to run and not leave my, not leave my truck. Like I want them to be happy. I want it to be a good situation for them. You know, it's not a greedy situation for me. I want drivers that want to stay in that to stay in that scenario. Um, but it, the two trucks just really challenging like that. Uh, based on all the math and the crunching of numbers, three trucks really will bring some relief to that scenario, uh, pretty substantially, because two trucks can cover the downtime of a third truck much easier than one can for sure um and then at the point where and i've seen numbers that were sent to me by other fleet owners the five truck thing is really like that's that's the hit the gas mark or hit the fuel whatever whatever you want to say uh, but that's the hit the gas mark is the five when you have five trucks then that little that little meat that's left at the top uh, each week multiplied times five or even four if one truck is down becomes real money. It becomes real substantial uh, net gains each week when it's five trucks. So three trucks makes it manageable and less painful. Five trucks is where it becomes pretty profitable. And then once those trucks are paid off, it becomes very lucrative and very profitable. So it's definitely a long game. You cannot say to yourself, uh, I'm getting into trucking and my plan is to start building a, a, a fleet in six months and I'm gonna be making baller money in a year. Like this really has to be like a five year, uh, you know, especially if you're solo, man, you have to really change your life uh, your spending habits, your saving habits, your financial outlook, and really just, you know, it just takes a big switch here and it takes uh, a commitment for the long haul to know that if this is your goal, if you want to build a fleet, then you really need to be looking at a five-year trajectory and figuring out how do you go from where you are now to having three trucks? What does that timeline look like? What is that cost breakdown gonna be for you? What does that mean you have to save each month through your e-fund or through personal savings? Um, you know, How are you gonna get to that three trucks? What is your scheduled out plan? Um, and then 
you know, from there you can, okay, well, I've got three trucks. Now how am I going to get to five trucks? You know, that, of course, it'd be very custom to you. But I'm just saying that, and this is not financial advice, but now that I'm running a fleet and I've got this truck that just came to me, uh, that I just, just picked up yesterday, um, I'm starting to have enough knowledge and enough data and enough networks that are communicating back to me to know that I still have a little work to do. I've got two more trucks that I need to add before I can say this works really well. Right now, I'm still in the, I've got to, you know, I'm still in that five year, I've got to build this plan. You know, I'm still in that stage, in that stage. <clears throat> now, d does that mean that you're going to be operating at a loss? No, I wouldn't say that. I'm not operating at a loss. I'm just saying that the, the net gain has not been what I see people on, online saying that it will be or in conversations of, you know, I've had drivers come up to me and say, Hey, you know, I'm, I've got these notes here. If I add a second truck, I should be, I should be making good money. Right. And I'm like, mm, no, that's not really, <laughs> it, it's more expensive to run that second truck than you think it is. There's more cost involved and more risk. And when something goes wrong, it's going to set you back pretty substantially. I mean, think about this. So I now, with three trucks, have basically a $20,000 nut to cover close to it. Not quite $20,000, but close to $20,000 a month that I'm liable for no matter what. Rain, shine, trucks running, trucks not running, does not matter. Uh, I'm paying close to $20,000 a month uh, for my trucks and insurance and all that good stuff. So, you know, you add a, another truck on there, well, now you're getting 23, 24,000, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, there's no room for error, you know. But again, that three truck mark, two trucks can cover the other truck's pain much easier than one truck can. And then five trucks, you've got four running out there. And if one is down, then, and the other four are running, then, you know, and if all five are running, then you're doing great. So I really think that, um, you know, and someone may have better answers for this. I'm just telling you in my experience right now, those are big numbers for me. Three, which I've just accomplished. And my next big milestone and number is five. So I am gonna order another truck the second that I can. I mean, the day that they change that order form to let us do another lease purchase order, I'm in and I'm ordering it for the 150 days and I'm hoping, I think it's 150 days is the minimum you have to set the date out. And I hope it gets there shortly thereafter and you know I'll be ordering another one after that. So my plan is to order a truck every year. Um, so that I can get into the cycle of one being paid off every year, uh, which means that anything that those trucks uh, gain, any net right now that those trucks gain, is going towards buying the next truck. So, which takes a lot of work. So anyway, I uh, hope that really kind of gives you some ideas and gives you some things to think about. Um, I'm not trying to discourage anyone. I think it's. Uh, an admirable goal and I think it's a worthy goal and it's a great thing to work towards and strive towards I just want to make sure that you have a reality check on the the discipline and the patience that's going to be needed to get to this to get to where I am now with three trucks and where I'm headed with five trucks and then hopefully ten trucks and beyond down the road um, you know it's it's work, you know, it, and it and it and it just takes a different different way of thinking and a lot of patience and a lot of discipline. So, for what it's worth, uh, those are that's my weekend thoughts. Reality check for building a private fleet with Prime Inc. Uh, hopefully, this was helpful. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. Be safe, make good decisions, and as always, drive to thrive. Talk with you guys soon.